Hi, this is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet the Big and Little Crochet Basket Set, which is a free pattern you'll find on MooglyBlog.com. Please go to the link in the description, or you can simply search in your favorite browser, Moogly Big and Little Basket Set, and it should pop right up. This pattern does include a free written pattern to go with the right and left-handed video tutorials. To make this pattern, I used a USQ 16 millimeter crochet hook, as well as a USL 8 millimeter crochet hook. I also used 135 yards of Bernat plush big yarn, that's three skeins total to make both baskets. I also used 30 yards of Bernat plush yarn, which is the smaller one you see here, to make those pretty basket handles, which are completely optional. Let's take a closer look at our big and little crochet basket set. And here you can see our finished big and little baskets. The big one is approximately 10 and a half inches long by nine and a half inches wide and five and a half inches tall. The small one is seven and a half inches long, seven and a half inches wide, and five inches tall. This lets them nest really beautifully, and of course, you can use them in every room of the house. You can see here how the Bernat Plush Big creates these really lovely big textured stitches, and for this, we're using the side split half double crochet, as well as a side split single crochet, which are stitches that I've come up with myself. You can see here too how nice and stiff and sturdy these baskets are. While they're still soft and made out of crochet, of course, they do nicely stand up on their own right on the table. So let's go ahead and get started making our baskets. So begin by making our basket using the larger yarn, the Bernat Plush Big, and our bigger hook. Whatever you can find in a 15 to 16 millimeter range is perfect for the hook. Both sizes instructions are included in the written pattern. So here we can see row one, chain seven, parentheses 11. That means for the small basket, we chain seven. And for the larger basket, we chain 11. Anytime you see two sets of numbers like this, the first one is for the smaller basket and the second one is for the larger basket. When there's only one number, then it refers to both baskets. Here you can see we work in rows to make the bottom of our basket for six rows for the small basket and eight rows for the large. So you'll see those sorts of instructions throughout this pattern. Because the instructions for the same, for both baskets rather, are the same other than the numbers, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate the smaller basket here today. So I've got my larger yarn and my larger hook, and I'm going to come in several inches. I like to leave a few more inches with this yarn just because it is a thicker yarn. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make a loop like that, sort of a twisted loop and drop it right on my hook. If you'd prefer, you can start with a standard slip knot. Then I'm going to chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's enough for the smaller basket. I'd want to chain 11 for the larger basket. To continue from here, we skip the chain closest to the hook and we're going to single crochet, or excuse me, half double crochet in each remaining chain across. I prefer to work into the bottom underneath hump of each chain, but you can work into whatever portion you prefer. So I'm going to go ahead, skip that chain closest to my hook, go to the next chain, and work a half double crochet in each of the remaining stitches. Since I chained seven, I'll have a total of six half double crochets. Had I chained 11, I would have a total of 10 half double crochets. So I'm just putting a half double crochet in each one of these chains until I reach the end of the row. And then when I reach the end of this row, I will turn and work back and forth in half double crochet rows. We have a total of six rows for the smaller basket and a total of eight rows for the larger basket. So I'm finishing up my first row here. We go right into that last stitch there, right before the slip knot or whatever loop you wanted to put on your hook. Just make sure you get six half double crochets there in whatever form you like to make them. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's the right number for the smaller basket. To make all the rest of the rows here for the bottom of our basket, we just chain one, turn, and half double crochet under both of those top two loops all the way across. So continue that for a total of six rows for the smaller basket or eight rows for the larger basket. And I'll see you when we get to the end of the bottom of the basket. 
So here you can see I have finished the bottom of the basket for the smaller basket. We've got six stitches across and six rows. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now we're ready to move on to the sides of the basket. Now we're going to be working in rounds. It's going to start out though, much like what we've already been doing. We chain one, turn, and work a half double crochet in each stitch of the previous row. So I'll see you as we get to the end of the row here. Round one of the side starts out like a row, six stitches across, but now we're going to turn and work a half double crochet in the side of each of those previous six rows. This can be a little tricky. We don't want to end up working to the side of the row we're currently making. So we want to make sure and look closely. This is our current stitch. We want to drop down to that next row to work into the side of. So we're going to go ahead. What I like to do is just find two loops along the side of each row to work under. So there's our first row. Finish our half double crochet. You can see I am working quite tightly. This is a smaller hook than what's recommended for this yarn, and that's on purpose. That's what gives us that really beautifully firm fabric. So we go to the first row, we go to the next row, find two loops along the side here. In this case, I'll split that stitch. There we go. Finish that half double crochet. We are working tightly, as I said. If you find that you need to stop and give your hands a break while you're making these projects, I do recommend that you do that. This can be a lot of work on your hands. This is a big yarn, a big hook, and it's some big stitches worked tightly. So feel free to take breaks and make sure to give your hands a wiggle and a nice stretch whenever needed. So we're working down our sides here. We've worked on the sides of the first four rows. We've got two rows left here. So I always wanna make sure and take our time, make sure we're dropping down to that next row and not adding an extra stitch in there. Since for this small size, I made six rows, We'll have six stitches down the side here. Had I made the larger basket with eight rows, we would have eight stitches down the side. Now this last one wants to be a little tricky. We'll find another stitch there. Get on top of our hook and our end wants to join the party. Get out of their end. There we go. We'll weave that in when we're all done. There we go. So now we've got our six stitches down the side. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six across the top. One, two, three, four, five, six down the side. Now we turn and work six stitches, or again, however many stitches you had in your basket, depending on the size you're making, right here across the bottom. This is where I really enjoy having worked into that bottom hump because now when I work across the bottom, I've got two loops and it looks just like the top of a stitch from this perspective. So I find those six stitches and work into the bottom of each of those. So there's one, two, go got that little strand there three now you may notice that it is starting to bowl up towards me the crochet project really wants to sort of come up towards me and that's great we are not increasing we want to start building the sides for our basket however I am working from the outside of the basket so at some point I'm going to want to flip this this way around but for now however it's you know pulling up on you is fine we want it to start bowling up a little bit at this point if you find that it's staying really flat, make sure that you're working your stitches tightly and that they're not super loose, especially on that top uh, final active loop of each stitch. So we've worked our way across here nice and tight. We've got our six stitches across the bottom. Now, of course, since we're making the small, we need six stitches here up the side. If it was large, there were eight rows, we would need eight stitches up the side. And this is where it's really easy to accidentally work into the round we're making. Remember this right here? is the round we're working on right now. So right there are those six rows right in between. So let's go ahead and just look closely. Here's the row we're making. So this is the next row. Find two, two little loops here at the end that we can stick our hook under. Just go ahead and take your time with this. You can see it just takes a minute sometimes to get the hook in there, great big hook. We want these stitches to be nice and tight. So there's one, a little bit more yarn from my skein here. The smaller basket takes just over one skein and the larger basket takes just over two, which is why we're able to use three skeins to make the set. So I work into the side of that first row, find the side of the second row here. Get those two loops on top of our hook. Like I say, we just wanna take our time with it. It is a small basket and as you can see here, it's going to work up very quickly, especially when you're not worried about making sure 
everybody at home can see every stitch you're making. So this is a really great project, not just for, you know, organizing different rooms of your home or your office, but also, of course, makes a great gift basket. You can gift it on its own, gift it as a set, fill it up with goodies for birthdays or holidays. Um, just a really, really handy pattern set, I think, to have around. Now, this is as we get to the end, we want to look closely and make sure we want to work into the side of that last row, not the round we're making. Right there. And of course, you can always count your stitches to make sure that you didn't get an extra one in there and you didn't skip anything. At the end of this first round for the smaller size basket, which we're making right here, you should have 24 stitches, six on each of those four sides. And for the larger size, you would have a total of 36 stitches. So here we finished up round one, almost. We still need to join with a slip stitch. So we wanna just find that very first stitch of our round here, look closely. You see there's our chain one. There are those two loops. If you would like, this is a really handy place to use your stitch markers. You can use a stitch marker in the first and last stitch of each round to really help you um, make sure you don't get mixed up on any of your slip stitches or anything. This is gonna be really handy with a stitch we're using, so I'm gonna set those up here after I finish this slip stitch. For now though, let's go ahead and we wanna pull this slip stitch really tight. We're not gonna be working back into it at all. This is a basket. We don't want our stitches to lean too much. I really take the time to pull my slip stitches really tight for this pattern, just like that. Now, with that slip stitch made, I'm gonna grab my stitch markers. I know that's the slip stitch, so I know this was the last stitch of the previous round or the round we just finished. And with this great big yarn, I can only mark that first loop, that front loop. This is the one we worked into. So that's the first stitch. And I want to go ahead and mark that one as well. Now, at this point is a good chance. If you want, go ahead and we can move our basket right side out. There we go. Get that end on the inside. And now we've already got that great basket shape happening. All righty. Now, the next few rounds are where we get to use our really fun stitch, the side split half double crochet. So what we're going to do is here, as we make round two of our sides, we're gonna go ahead and start with a chain one. And now we're gonna look for that first stitch. We can see here is our marked first stitch. And normally when we crochet, unless otherwise instructed, we go under those top two loops, right? This is a very different stitch. This is the side split half double crochet. It shares a little bit in common with the waistcoat stitch. It shares a little bit in common with some Tunisian stitches, um, but I think it's just a really fun stitch that creates a beautiful textured fabric, uh, slightly different look, sort of a really neat sort of almost woven look. And um, I think it just adds a little bit more interest. So let's go ahead and get to it. I'm going to go ahead now and move this first stitch marker out of the way. I've got a good eye on this stitch. I know this is the body of that first stitch. Here are those top two loops. Here is the yarn over from the half double crochet. And here are the loops we pulled up through the previous stitch. These are the two loops right here pulled up from the previous stitch that we wanna look for. And then specifically, if you're right-handed, you wanna be looking for the left one. And if you're left-handed, you wanna be looking for the right one right there. So let's make a side split half double crochet together. I'm going to yarn over because it's a half double crochet. I'm going to put my hook under just that furthest vertical bar right there in front of the stitch but then instead of keeping my hook in front of the rest of the fabric I'm going to go ahead and send it to the back between those two stitches the stitch that has this loop and the next stitch over here I just go right to the back like so yarn over pull that loop all the way up and through especially with big yarn we always want to take our time to pull that loop all the way up and through and then we just yarn over and pull through all three to finish it as a standard half double crochet just like so. Don't worry, I'm gonna show you that several more times, but first I wanna go ahead and mark that first stitch of the round. There we go. So now we continue, yarn over again, find the next stitch. Really pull your fabric apart if you need to. You can see right there is the top two loops of the next stitch. They wanna hide under this stitch a little bit, so don't be afraid to sort of handle your yarn, pull it apart a little bit. There's the top two loops, there's those two vertical bars down here going to the stitch below. So we want to go under the furthest one from our hook, straight through to the back of our fabric, yarn over, pull that loop all the way through, to up to the top of our fabric like that, then we can yarn over and pull through all three to finish. And again, we do want to be working pretty tightly 
to create a really nice sturdy basket. It's a little harder to see in this. Let me pull back up our white one here so you can see, hopefully, <laughs> the effect of that stitch pattern a little bit. When we work under that left vertical bar, it creates a really, I think, a really unique and pretty look to the fabric, just a really neat texture. So this is what we're going to be doing for the next several rounds. So let's do a few more together. We yarn over, we go to the next stitch, go ahead and pull it apart if we need to, find those top two loops, find those two vertical bars, go under the one furthest from the hook and straight to the back of the fabric. Yarn over, pull our loop all the way up and through, yarn over and finish our stitch. Yarn over, find the next stitch, find that vertical bar. Go right under that vertical bar to the back, yarn over, pull up our loop, yarn over, and pull through all three. Now, if you need to, you can go ahead and rewatch that, slow it down, speed it up, use the gear icon to see that a little closer if you'd like to. Let's do it one more time. We're going to yarn over, because it's a half double crochet, right? Find that very next stitch right there. There's those top two loops. Normally we'd go right there, but we're looking for those two vertical bars right down here at the bottom. One, two. Might be a little hard to see. You can use your fingers to pull them apart if you need to, okay? They'll be right under that loop, which was your yarn over. So we insert our hook under that bar, and if you need to just do it just that way at a little bit at a time, you can, and then just go ahead and send it straight back. Yarn over, follow that loop up and through. Yarn over finish your half double crochet. And that's the stitch we're going to keep making. When we go to get around to the end, all we need to do is join with a slip stitch, chain one, start again. Always gonna start in that first stitch. So we'll join with a slip stitch here, but then the first, the next round, we'll go under that vertical bar right there. So depending on what size basket you're making, you'll continue this stitch for a couple more rounds or one more round than that. Basically, we have uh, this is round two right here. We'd work rounds three and four in this same stitch for the small size and work through round five of the sides for the larger size. Then we get ready to set up our handles. So as I say, you repeat that round several times depending on what size you're making, just like we made there in round two. Then we move on to setting up for the handles. Right here in our sample, I've only worked through round two, but you can stop there too if you'd like a shorter basket. So let's go ahead and move to the next round where we do the setup for our handles. We're going to start with a chain one and then a side split half double crochet in the first six or 11 stitches. Now, if like me, you've changed the number of rounds you've made, this may slightly offset where our handles are going to end up. So if you find that, for instance, on one side it's over here and on the other side it's over here and they're not lined up properly, go ahead and take your time, maybe use some stitch markers and line them up to work with your unique custom basket. Our join is relatively straight for this one, but it does have a little bit of a lean. So if you've added or subtracted rows, it may change the position of your handles a little bit. I do have a separate tutorial for this on the Moogly YouTube channel, as well as linked in the written pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead and move my stitch marker out of the way here and make those first, in this case, six side split half double crochets. So there's one. You can see I moved my stitch marker out of the way there. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that on up here to our new first stitch. There we go. And then continue across for six more here. So, or excuse me, five more. So there's our second one. Third one's going in there. Fourth one in the next one. five, and one more there in the sixth one. So basically, because of the shorter height here, ours is gonna end up probably a little bit skewed this way. But for the sake of demo, we're just gonna roll with it right now. So we've got our six half double, side split half double crochets there. It would be 11 if you were making the larger size. Then we put our first handle in. Very simply, we chain four. One, two, three, four. A little bit more yarn here. 
then we're going to skip the next four stitches. And this is where we want to look closely because we know these side split half double crochets try to hide the top of that next stitch a little bit. So we want to be sure not to skip that one. One, two, three, or rather to skip that one, I should say, to count it when we do skip it. One, two, three, four. There's the fifth one. We're going to come over here and that's where we put our next side split half double crochet. So I'm going to get my thumb right under that loop so I can yarn over and get my hook right on over there. Send that hook onto the back of the fabric and finish our stitch here. There we go. So we chain four and skip four to create that handle opening. So if you need to, if you've adjusted this pattern, if you've, like I say, added or subtracted rounds, or if you've changed the size overall, you'll want to take your time to make sure that those are going to line up on your newly adjusted basket. Otherwise, after we chain four and skip four, we side split half double crochet in the next next eight or 14 stitches, depending on the size you're making. Since I'm making the small, I'll need eight. There's one, this would be two here. I'll see you when I get to the end of this eight. Three. So there's my eighth stitch and it's time to make my second handle. I chain four again, one, two, three, four, skip four stitches. Make, again, make sure that we're counting that one in the moments we skip. One, two, three, four. And then in the smaller size, you should have two left. And in the larger size, you should have three left. So we just want a half double crochet, side split half double crochet, that is, in those remaining stitches so that we can join to that first stitch of the round. You can see that first one after the chaining gets a little crazy. We just get work it off one loop at a time. Make sure our chain stayed nice and straight and we can finish up our round. Then we're ready for the last round of our sides. So here you can see we finished that round and our handles are slightly offset, but that's because this is a demo piece without the proper number of rounds. If I wanted to make the basket actually this size, I would have shifted those two uh, sections with the chain four, skip four over probably one stitch each time. Just added another stitch, maybe seven here, so that the whole thing shifted around and only had one to do at the end. Again, if you're making a custom basket, you'll need to play with it just a little bit. But if you follow the written instructions, those handles should up end up nicely centered. So let's go ahead and make that last round together here before we make our handle covers. This one's going to be just a little bit different. We want to finish it off. We're going to chain one. And now instead of a side split half double crochet, we're just going to do a side split single crochet in each stitch around. When we get to those chain fours, however, with, um, for our handles, we're going to work a single crochet in each one of those individual chains. So let's go ahead and do that together. Here is our first stitch. I'm going to go ahead and get my stitch marker out of the way. You can see I've already joined to that. I've got my chain one. I'm going to find that vertical bar again, the same one that I found before. But this time I don't need to yarn over first because it's just a single crochet. So I go under that loop straight through to the back of the fabric just as before. Yarn over and pull up our loop yarn over and pull through two. Easy enough. Same stitch, but done as a single crochet instead of a half double crochet. Still want to mark that so I know right where I am as I come around and I can join. But other than that, we just go right in there just as we were doing before, but now we don't have to do the yarn over. And of course, we only pull that final loop, yarn over and pull through two here. Let me do that once more really slowly here. Go ahead, you can see it still wants to cover up the top of that next stitch, so we want to take our time Find that next vertical bar. You see here, I really like using my thumb of my non-hook hand to sort of pull it up for myself, make it a little easier to get into. You'll find your own rhythm with this stitch, I think, once you get used to it and take your time with it and have made a few rounds with it. It's a stitch that I came up with um, because it has a similar look to the waistcoat stitch, um, but I don't enjoy doing the waistcoat stitch as much. I find that I struggle with it quite a bit, and I find this to give a similar, although not identical, look um, and it's just simply much easier for me. It's easier on my hands and on my eyes. So you can see a little bit of how that looks right there and how so that side split single crochet is really finishing it off nicely. We've gotten to our first handle here. Now again, this is still a side split stitch, so it really wants to push that way. So we want to pull and make sure we get that very first chain there. Now this whole handle thing, you can work into these and call it done. If you want to make the handle covers with the smaller yarn, then you're not going to see what you're doing here. So if you struggle to work into your chains, you know, in a uniform way, 
or you're just really having trouble finding, you know, each loops, go ahead and work into it whatever way is most comfortable for you. Maybe that's going to be under just the back loop. Maybe that's going to be under both of those top two loops. Maybe it's going to be under the back loop and the underneath loop. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that you like what you come up with. Get into that chain somehow and make a single crochet. For these, I usually just work under those top two loops. But if you're newer to crochet or you're just really struggling to get into those chains, don't let it stress you out too much because it's all going to get covered up with those handle covers. So nobody will see what you do right here in this section anyway. I do recommend that you work into the chains rather than working to the chain space. It just spaces it out a little more nicely for this pattern. But again, it's your project. And if you want to work into that chain space instead, that is certainly a choice you can make. There we go. Really have to push through some of those. All righty. So now we've worked a single crochet into each one of those four chains, sort of built up our handle. And now we can go, whoops, put a yarn over on there I don't need. Now we go right back to those side split single crochets. We just find that vertical bar of that very first one, go underneath there, pull up our loop and make our single crochet. So we just continue like that all the way around. And then of course we can join and finish off this yarn and then we're ready to make our handle covers. So when you finished your basket, it's time to decide if you want to make those optional basket handle covers. Now for the main basket, we used Bernat plush big. You can see right here for the handle covers, I'm using the much thinner Bernat plush. They're very similar, same construction, just different weights. Since that one was so thick, we used our big hook. For this one, we want to use our smaller eight millimeter crochet hook or whatever hook size really works best for you. This is, you know, it's just meant to fit over that handle section. So if you find that you need a slightly larger one to make it fit right or a slightly smaller one, uh, maybe you only have a seven or a nine or something, that's fine too. Let's go ahead and get started. Of course, you'll need two of these per basket, but we make them one at a time. We're going to start row one by chaining seven. So let's get that going there. One, two, three, four five, six, and seven. We're going to skip the chain closest to our hook and single crochet in each remaining chain across. Pretty simple stuff. Since we chained seven, we'll have a total of six single crochets. So there's three, four, five, and six. It's in there. There we go. All righty. So very simple, chain seven, single crochet in the last six chains. For row two, we're going to start with a chain one and turn, of course, and then we're going to work a front loop only single crochet in each stitch across. So we need to stop for a moment. I'm going to pull up that loop so I don't lose it. And let's look at the stitches that we've made in row one. Right now, when we look at this, we're kind of looking at the backs of those stitches. Now we're looking at the tops of those stitches. And of course, we've got those V's, those nested V's that we normally work, work under both of those loops when we work a stitch. However, we can choose to work under just the front loop or the back loop. The front loop is the loop of that V that's closest to us, whereas the back loop is the one that's furthest away. It's always relative to you, the crocheter. So as long as my work is facing this way, these are my front loops. When my work faces this way, now these are my front loops. So let's go ahead and work under just those front loops for row two. I'm gonna turn and get all set up here again. Of course, I wanna skip my chain one, that's my turning chain. And now I'm going to front loop only, single crochet in each stitch across. So we want to go under that front loop. And normally we'd push all the way through, but we wanna come up right in the middle of the stitch there. You can see that back loop is not on top of my hook. So I can work a standard single crochet, there's one. And then we just continue on across, leaving those back loops unworked. We just go right under that front loop. I find if I kind of increase my angle, it comes up right in the middle of that stitch and I can make my single crochet. Just kind of come right up under that front loop only. This is going to create a really smooth side and we're going to have a more textured side. And the textured side is actually going to go on the inside of our handles and get sewn in and hidden away. This is the side right here that's going to show. So there is our front loop only, single crochet row, still six stitches across. We don't want to increase or decrease at all for this uh, portion for these handles. For row three, 
we chain one and turn. You can see right there is the line created by that unused back row. But now for row three, we're going to single crochet in the back loop only. So again, I've got my turning chain right there. I'm going to find that first stitch. Now I'm going to come down in the middle of the stitch and just catch that back loop on top of my hook. So there's one, two, just take your time and catch just that one loop. Three, four, five, and six. There we go. So now if you look closely, you can see how there's a little bit more texture on this side and the side is a little bit smoother. So again, this is gonna be the right side of our handle and this is going to be the wrong side of our handle. Now we want to repeat rows two and three, the front loop only, then back loop only, until we have a total of seven rows made. And this is gonna be the same for both the small baskets and the large baskets, because they both have the same size handle spaces. So for, that means for row four, we chain one and we work in the front loop only. For row five, we'll be in the back loop only. Go back and forth, repeating through row seven, and I'll see you when we get to the end of row seven. So here you can see I've worked seven rows. My last row was on the wrong side and it was a back loop only row. So we've got lots of texture here and it's a little bit smoother here on the right side. You can see too, I can double check, both my ends ended up on this side of the fabric. So what I want to do now is go ahead and cut my yarn, but I want to leave a little bit of a longer tail because I'm going to be sewing these two rows together here, our last row and our very first row over that handle. So I wanna make sure that I leave enough length to sew those together. So I always like to leave at least three times as much, but with this yarn, because it uses so little for this pattern, I'm actually gonna use just a little bit more to give myself a little bit more leeway. So we can go ahead and cut our yarn, set the rest aside. Don't forget, you'll want two of these for each basket, but for now we'll go ahead and stop there. I'm going to go ahead and pull up on that strand of yarn and set the hook aside and put that yarn end right on my yarn needle. You'll want a relatively large yarn needle for this type of yarn, but I find that it's helpful to pinch that end really tightly to get it through that opening. There we are. And now we're ready to sew it onto our basket. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is you'll probably want to go ahead and weave in that very first end before you sew this on. Makes it a lot easier. But then we're finally ready to sew these on. You can kind of do it however you like, whatever works best for your hands. We do, again, wanna make sure the textured side goes in, and then we're just going to wrap it right over the handle here, opening, and sew it right along the bottom. So how I like to do this, it's a little awkward. I take my needle, send it through that hole first, and then pull this through. And sometimes I'll even sew it on top and then turn it around over the handle. But let's try and sew it a little more closely into place here. And if you find that it doesn't want to reach, you can stretch it out. If it really, if it's pulling, if your gauge is a little tighter than mine, go ahead and add an extra row. It'll be fine. Just want it to fit right over that handle like so. There we go. So now we can match up. You can see here's those stitches, those six stitches we made in our final round, row. And here are the bottom of those six stitches we made in our first row. So now we're just going to basically running stitch these two together. So let's go ahead and do that here. We're going to take our needle and go under that first stitch right there on the side we're at. And then I'm going to come over here and go under that first stitch as well. We're just going to gently pull these together like so. Then I'm going to come down to this next stitch on the same side and find the second stitch on the other side there and pull those through. Pull those a little tighter there. Find the next stitch on the same side and go to the other side and pull that through. Next stitch on the same side, go over to the other side and pull that through. Next stitch on the same side, opposite stitch on the other side. Oop, feels like I may have split the yarn there with my needle. With this yarn, what you really wanna do is avoid splitting the yarn if possible. So I try and take my time there, make sure I get under those strands. There we go. 
And then we come down to that last pair of stitches. We start on the same side, go to the opposite side. And you can see how we've been going back and forth there. That is called the running stitch. You can also see how it creates sort of a little movement there. So just to make sure this is nice and steady and sturdy, since it's a basket handle and I like to put my baskets through a workout, I'm going to go back the other direction to make sure this is extra sturdy on there. If you're done, if you're happy with it, you can go ahead and finish off there, weave in this end. But what I like to do is actually catch those ends a little bit. They're not even officially stitches. I guess you could say there's turning chains maybe. But I really like to get my handles on there really, really well. Of course, there we go. Pull that through. And then I will go back sort of the other direction, going through all those stitches again. Of course, then I managed to split one. If you do that, you can just pull it back out. Just sort of get yourself set up here comfortably. And then just keep going back and forth until I am satisfied with my handle and I know it's sewn on really tightly. If you break the yarn a little bit like that, it's not a big deal. I've done it several times. Just means we split that strand a little bit. You can just trim that off like so. It'll be fine. And then we go right back to sewing. And we just go right back and forth through those same stitches Again, take your time with it. Make sure you don't catch the actual strands and it's a whole lot easier. There we go. So I just work my way right back, like I said, to where I began. Sewing takes a little bit longer, but there's not that much of it. Get right down here to the end. See, the ends like to try and hide. So that's why I like to send a couple extra stitches right there through at the end to make sure that our handles all stay together really beautifully. Once you are done with your sewing and you're satisfied with how your handles look on there, there we go. Then we can just send that end sort of right back through here and then take our time and weave in that end and we're all set. And then you can make your other handle cover for the other end of your basket. And that's how to crochet the big and little crochet basket set. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.